Hey everybody, what's going on? Admin of Tales Twin Tales here, Moy. And today for this episode of the Source Filmmaker Sonic series tutorial that I'm going to be doing, um, if that title made any sense, I'm going to be um, showing you the basics for this, um, uh, the SFM tool. But before we get started with the basics, I need to show you guys a couple things in case you're brand new to the SFM. If you're new to the whole SFM thing, you will need to know a couple things. It's that the SFM is a rather um, demanding uh, program. It needs a 3.0 gigahertz um, dual core, probably preferred. Uh, it, I'd say something higher, but that's the minimum. This is what you could at least run it with. Uh, it's recommended that you have the at least something better than this but this is coming from a guy that used to run SFM back on an old 11 year old laptops and it ran relatively well somewhat so if you're okay with these settings if you're okay with um, running at somewhat of a okay laggish speed the frame rate I mean then you should be good to go either way or if you have a if you have a rig that completely blows these specs out of the water then by all means please go forward on that anyways oh, when you open up the SFM this is the first thing you're gonna see this is the create create a new um, session dialogue so what you're gonna want to do is down here set the frame rate to 30 name it something simple name it anything you want really for this um, test recording, I'm going to name it test. Uh, very, very generic. Now, you may see a couple things here that are wrong. For example, the main screen right here, this is your primary view, primary viewport. This is your primary viewport. Um, for now, it says no map loaded. This is because at the moment there is no map loaded. And the timeline just loaded in. You can scroll in and out by moving this around. Pretty simple stuff. And if you get lost or if you want to go back without having to go back slowly like this, just press the up key, well the up arrow. So to load a map, you're going to want to go over here to load map. You do this by right clicking into the primary report, a little window will pop up, load map. Or you could do my, uh, my method, well it's a shortcut really, if you hold control L, that'll bring you up to the map selection tool map selection. So for this test session we're going to want to load up the map stage. So type in stage and use this one stage.psp. The other one's a bigger version which is uh, about I think twice the size of the original of the um, small one but you're gonna want to use the small one for this. Now if SFM takes a little bit longer to load your map then that's perfectly fine. The wait time between loading maps depends on how fast or how um, how much memory your computer has. Alright, so once the map is loaded, here's a couple things you can do. Over here you'll notice that it says work, work camera. By this, it means that you can now move around the camera at your own will. You do this by clicking on the primary viewport and moving it around with your mouse. Once you start clicking it and holding it, you can now do the traditional WSAD movement. Now this may be a little bit weird at first, but you, the standard WSAD is for, W is forward, S is back, A is left, and D is right. Now if you want to go up and down, X is to go down, and Z is to go up. If you feel like the speed is a little bit too slow or too fast, while, while moving around, press space to go faster. Oh, my bad, my bad, I didn't mean space. I meant press shift to go faster and control to go a lot slower. Okay. Now, if you want to go set yourself back onto the original position, just click on more camera. That'll reset your position to the original form. Now, you may be wondering, what are all these buttons for? Well, to be honest, the only important ones for now that you're going to need are this plus button up here and, th and these two. So what you're going to want to do first is load up a model. Given that we're working with Sonic characters, we're going to want to load up, uh, let's load up Tails in this case. 
So you're going to type in tails, and you're going to see a couple models show up. The model we're going to be working with is modern tails. So there we go. Now something you can do here in the uh, model selection, if you click on this viewport right here, you can right click to zoom in, hold shift to move him about, and then control I believe to, okay I don't think control does anything. Alright, so that's what you can do with him. You can look, take a look at the skins he has. Hi, yeah, there we go. He doesn't have any sequences, so no actions, and he doesn't have any um, activities to do. So let's load him up with his um, default skin. Now you may be wondering why, we'll, why, why we're crotch first in, in the tails. Well, this is actually pretty simple to solve. What you'll have to do is click on here on this little jagged line, and Bam! Welcome to the graph editor. This is where you're going to be spending most of your time animating. Now there's actually two methods that you can do animation. My preferred one is the graph editor, but one more you can do is the motion editor tool. This one I'm not too familiar with. I have no idea how this one works, so I prefer using the graph editor for this. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is obviously drag the camera out a little bit. Center it to where that circle is right in between. In fact, let's center ourselves just a little bit there. Now, if you want to get tails over here, hold control bot while using the work camera. You'll notice that a couple dots appear, appear around tails. Well, a couple, a lot. So find the one that says root transform. That usually is located right under his feet. Click it, and you'll notice that this, that this popped up over here. This is essentially your workspace over here. This is where you'll be selecting every single every model. All right. So now that we got we've got his root transform selected, switch back to the camera one. Hover your mouse over this, click, don't move yet, and then hold shift. This will allow you to lock tails on or any model really onto the ground, no matter what it is. So in this case, Let's drag tails straight to the middle, right there. All right, let's zoom in on him a little bit. Oh, and you can use also use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out, so that's pretty useful. Though, be careful, I see a lot of people do this. Don't scroll out too far, and then attempt to scroll back in. It doesn't look as, you see it looks really kind of weird. Well, the reason it does that is, well, I'm kind of unsure as to why it does that, but if you zoom in, it gives a better effect. Looks rather normal, actually. All right, so let's reset the camera. Zoom in on the tails a little bit. Let's center them, actually, like this. All right. All right, so now that we have tails locked onto the scene, now we can pose them about. And the way you do this is by switching to the pressing 3. No, wait. Oh, that wasn't it. Okay. By pressing E, this will enable the rotation tool. This right here can rotate him on any axes. And around and around. Oh yes, you can also use the standard control Z um, to undo and uh, control shift Z to redo. All right, so to begin posing tails, let's zoom in on him a little bit. First, you want to open. Oops, excuse me. First, you'll want to open his eyes. So to do this, you go over here to the animation step editor, click on the plus next to unknown. And scroll down up to these these couple. I open first, drag that slider up, I open second, I open first for his right eye, and I open second. Now this looks pretty weird at the moment, but that's okay. What you'll have to do is go over to face, and this is where his eye control groups are located. They're very simple and easy to use. Actually, a lot easier than to do to do than in Gary's mod. So, let's put his eyes down like this. 
And now, obviously, that don't look right. And actually, his eyes seem to be a little bit big. Hang on one sec, let me fix that. There we go. Okay, so now his eyes are reset. I had them set a little bit larger for some, another project I was doing. Okay, so now you may notice that Tails' eyes are very, very um, barely in productions, um, Sonic Zombie uh, style. So what you're going to want to do to fix this is you're going to want to go into Eye Convergence and drag this slider until it's just right. Now you can drag this completely in, but it'll make his eyes disappear. So don't do that. <laughs> separate that just a little bit. Looks a little cross-eyed. Okay, there we go. After that, you might notice that he has these little eyelids coming from under him. To fix this is actually pretty simple. You go back over here into the unknown control group. Look for one that says R E eyelid lower open. That'll open his right under eyelid. Do the same for his left one. And there you go. And now we begin his actual posing. To do this, it's actually very simple. What you have to do is you'll notice that he has several, several of these purple dots located all around him. Well, these dots represent bones. For example, upper arm, forearm, hand, wrist, and his fingers. Spine, spine, head, and you can actually move his hairs around as well as his ears and muzzle. So let's put him in a somewhat natural pose. So for this we're going to close, up, close in his feet a little. And just a reminder, you use this tool, well, you select this tool, the um, rotation, by pressing E on your keyboard when you're in the um, graph editor. Select this foot. And now that seems to be pretty good, but there's an issue. His feet are clipping through the floor. This is pretty, pretty simple to fix. Locate his root transform and scroll him up just to make sure he's not floating out in midair. And he is. There we go. Let's move his foot just a little bit. There we go. There we go. He seems to be a little bit more relaxed now. So now, what you're going to want to do to move uh, the rest of his body. Uh, he still seems a bit stiff, so what we're going to want to do is cl click on spine, move that back a little, move this one back a little, just a little bit, not a lot. Locate his BIP head, well his head. Um, this is actually a little bit tricky to locate. It's hidden, it's hidden in the same place as his eyelid references, so just move the mouse just a little bit and, and locate it. But if you still can't locate it here, don't worry. Go over to body over here on the animation set editor, and it should be under under the body tab. So move his head down a little bit. Now let's move his hands down. Alright, let's actually move them back like that, and then, there we go. Alright, now that looks a lot better now, doesn't it? But there still seems to be an issue. His tails aren't exactly the most lively things out there, are they? Not at the moment, at least. So what you're going to want to do is pose his tails now. You do this by selecting his tail bones. They're all set right here. So let's start with his right tail. You'd click on tail1 R. 
move that down. Tail 2, R. Tail 3. And tail 4. Start with tail 1, L. Tail 2. Tail 3. And tail 4. Looks a little bit better. But still not exactly the way I want him to. So let's move them down like so. There we go. That's slightly better. Alright, so let's reset the camera like so. Oh, and if you press the control key while clicking on camera, you can set the, the work camera to be the exact same as your regular camera. So in this case, ta-da. Okay, so this seems pretty good so far, but it still looks a bit unnatural. So what we're gonna wanna do now is, his fingers are a little off the tone right there. So what we're gonna wanna do is put that in a more natural pose. Uh, okay. So open up his fingers a bit. You should have the posing basics down by now. If not, then just um, recap on what I said. And if you didn't understand what I said, I'm sorry. I'm trying to be as explanative as possible, but I'm a little bit um, camera shy when it comes to this kind of thing. All right, so it looks a bit more natural, I guess. But his thumb is still kind of sticking out like that, and I doubt anyone just stands naturally like that. So let's repose that. There we go. Now let's do the same with the other hand. Now I'm gonna um, fast forward for this, so. Okay, and we're back, and I've gone ahead and posed his hands already. So, this is the end of the basics tutorial. I hope you guys managed to make it through my stuttering. I'm very sorry about that. I'll see if I can improve on that. My speech isn't exactly the best, but I am trying to show you guys how to do this because um, I was curious as to how many um, uh, Sonic SFM tutorials were on YouTube. And to my complete shock and surprise, you know, there were only a, two of them and they were like in a foreign language and they weren't properly explained. Um, you know, they didn't go over a lot of the basics in case you were new to SFM. They sort of just assumed that you knew it. But what they, what some, some people don't understand, I guess, is that a lot of people see these really cool Sonic animations or whatever. And they're like, oh, I, I want to do that too. And so they like immediately jump into SFM thinking that it's all easy and stuff, but then they see the layout of SFM, you know, the way everything works, and it's like, uh, oh, uh, uh, how do I do this? So, um, I th thought it'd be a nice idea and see if I can give it my own shot, see if I can make my own tutorial. Now, this is only the basics. I will go over in the next episode how to start and uh, properly understand the basics of animation. So, I'll see you guys then, and thank you very much for watching.